justices of the High Court, judges of the High Court, and of course, first and foremost, uh, the members of the district judiciary. The whole event is for them actually, so a big clap for them actually. <laughs> Wonderful faculty at uh, FGA, the dynamic director general who sits here, the proud alumni of FGA, and of course all the dignitaries from the government as well as from the development organizations who have been there supporting us, especially UN women, NITV in particular, and other donors, and the Indian family. So the purpose of a judicial academy is to provide a continuing legal education as we all know and help improve our research abilities and become better judges. But more importantly, it's a platform for self-development and that's how we should see it. This is a great platform where we come to improve ourselves, near meet our peers, improve our standards, our quality. So this space is a space for collaboration and I want you to look at the academy as a space where you come and interact with your peers. Do not think of it as a, as a teaching institution alone. It's a place where you interact with the other judges, exchange ideas, share legal culture. Because from all the provinces you get here, it's an ideal example of a federation coming together. So it's wonderful to get to know a judge from Rochester, a judge from Sin, talk about your cultures, talk about your provincial laws, how you adjudicate matters. It helps judges a lot in doing that. And I think that is the real core having a federal judicial academy where the whole country comes together and I've been always, you know, the faculty here that we've been promoting the line, the phrase that one country, one judiciary, that's the way to do it, you see, that brings it together. That unity is very important. The judges must have unity, they must interact with each other because that helps build consistency in our approach, judicial approach, it helps build public confidence which is very important, we need an efficient and credible administration of justice. So this unity, this coming together, this cohesiveness is very important. I think that's the golden point of having a federal judicial academy where everybody comes together. But here I would also like to say that it is an ideal space for judges of the High Court and the Supreme Court to mix with the district judiciary. I think something that's lacking is this communication. I think the Supreme Court judges need to come out to this space, the High Court judges should come out here, not only to lecture, but spend time with them. Have a cup of tea, have lunch with them, talk to the members of the district judiciary. And I think it will hugely, hugely add to their confidence and the approach that they will take when they go back home. So I think we must, that the space is not being utilized for that purpose. And I would encourage my fellow judges sitting here, including the Honorable Chief Justice, that this, this encouragement is required, an ideal space in the heart of Islamabad to be judges from all over the country, talk to them, understand their problems. This helps build a better governance model for the institution also. We understand their problems. If I cannot communicate to my, my civil judge or a district judge, I don't know what their problems are. I cannot lead to a better governance of the institution. So if we want to build a strong institution, we all need to talk and get to know each other. Nothing like a very judicial academy where all this can happen. Uh, so let me just uh, first of all thank the Honorable Chief Justice of Pakistan who had this vision, who wanted a bit of an energy in this place. He wanted to reinvent the academy. He wanted something to be done here because nothing much was happening. And so he tasked me, I mean, the academy fame and the board tasked me to look after uh, this academy and see if we can do something with it. So we looked at the Federal Judicial Act, which is 1997, <coughs> and saw what was the objective of this Federal Judicial Academy. So primarily the objective of the Federal Judicial Academy is to train judges of the district judiciary and the court personnel. So we're looking at 3,200 judges in the country. We're looking at about 48,000 court personnel. So when we saw that figure, we said, okay, how many judges come to this academy every year? So we noticed that uh, the figures that worked out were about 15% of the total strength would get to an academy in a year. We said, okay, and forget about uh, the court staff. The data shows that perhaps 1% of the court staff got to the academy and some support courses that we had for them. So how do we reach out to all the judges? I was attending a course here and I came to uh, lecture and I, I met some of the judges and I asked them that 
uh, uh, how, uh, how often have you come here? They said, in 21 years of my judicial experience, this is the first time here, sir. And he told me very interesting thing. He said, today I have learned the law of evidence for the first time. For a minute, I you know, I missed a meal because what he did for the 21 years that he was adjudicating justice. But then, you know, that is the sad part. It is my responsibility, responsibility of people who are running this institution to ensure that everybody gets here. 21 years. And there are a number of them who would say, we have now seen Federal Judicial Academy. They have never come out here. That cannot be so. Academy is so critical to our development, our growth as judges. It must be mainstream in our life. Every judge has to touch the academy every time, in a year at least. So we try to do that. And for doing that, we thought, how do we embark on this program when we touch every judge? So we said, let's use technology. Because that's the only way we can go beyond these walls. We can't pull everybody in. 3,200 judges cannot come to Islamabad and be a part of this program. And certainly 48,000 court personnel can never get in here and we cannot teach them. And let me also tell you that the 48,000 court personnel which would be elders and readers and all that, they have never been trained. So don't expect that the things are not working in the district judiciary and the files are not being managed properly and they don't know how to do case management. We never taught them. They don't have a job description by the way. They don't know what their job description is. Call our elders and ask them what's your job description and you probably not know. So I mean to expect them to start managing files and running an efficient system in the districts would be you know, uh, not really correct on our part. So it's about time that we reach out to them and do something. So in order to do this, we thought we need to put a team together. The faculty wasn't really there here. We had a wonderful and my good stars that I got to work with the a very dynamic uh, director general, Hayat Risha, was here. And Mr. Fakhar Zaman, who is probably enjoying Dubai at the moment, was also a part of the faculty here, very dynamic. And I really enjoyed working with them and Aisha Rasool. They, some of the people who were already here were already very excited about all this. But we thought that we need to get a faculty in place. Like any university, academy is known by its faculty. That's the core strength that the institution must have. So we reached out, headhunted, and picked out the best possible resource that we could lay our hands on in the country and got uh, judges from, from various tiers also. We have district judges, additional central judges, as well as civil judges who've come out here to teach and we picked them up from across the country and we'll be, uh, uh, one person from Rajasthan will be joining us soon once we have vacancy. So we have a, a mix of uh, faculty from all over the country but one of the best 11 people that we have in the country is the faculty now. We have a faculty of 11. We also have a faculty, a visiting faculty of almost 91 resource persons in the country who could reach out, who will be helping us with this new program, the Federal uh, Judicial Education Program that we've developed, which is hybrid in its nature. And I will explain why high hybrid and why, why it is required. It is also, throughout the year, we we'll look at all the four tiers of the judiciary, starting from civil judge, senior civil judge, judicial session judge, and district judge. All the four tiers will go through a program, and we plan to actually, you know, how the program works is, that the online gene program that you see will be, you know, everybody can participate. And we'll see who's really interested in coming out and improving himself, who's interested in self-development. And if we come up with, come up with, a, with a whatever percentage that we decide, we will take those people in for the face-to-face -face, face -face program. We don't want anybody coming to this face-to-face -face, face program where you have this wonderful resource teaching them who's not interested. He's been sent because the Chief Justice of a particular province said you go ahead and attend this course and he's not interested. We want people to do well in the GE program and who are interested to come to the academy. There has to be that incentive, that desire to come out here. GE continues. GE will keep on going. People can improve. Maybe some who did not make it in the first round can keep on improving. But they'll have to prove that they want to come to the academy and do something about it. And then they will be brought into a face-to-face -face program. So everybody goes through an awareness program, a gene program, the modules, and they keep getting all sorts of videos and materials and self-learning programs. But if they really want to come out here face-to-face, -face, 
go through the incentives we offer in the face-to-face -face program, they have to really prove themselves that they're interested in doing that. Because we don't have the resource or the energy to waste on people who are not interested in improving themselves. So that's how we touch the entire judiciary, uh, district judiciary who come out here and go through our training. So we plan to probably take about 660 uh, judges who will go through a face-to-face -face program in a year. If the program runs around the year, and that's the plan so far. So before uh, finalizing the curriculum, as it was mentioned here, it was not that these 11 people would be sad when we came up with this program. We reached out to all the judges through the TNA. The, the, the TNA reached out to all of them by the broadcast system that we have. Now today, while the, when the Honorable Chief Justice of Pakistan will be speaking to the district judiciary, every member of the district judiciary can hear him live. And they will be a recording also uploaded later on to people who missed our own speech. So this facility is amazing that with a click of a button we can reach out to 3200 judges telling them whatever is happening, sharing with them information, videos, whatever. You see an online program of the judges, University of Chicago, University of Oxford, uh, Professor Yasin Qureshi has agreed to do a program of constitutional history with all the judges here. It's quite a celebrated academic at Oxford University. It's just a matter of reaching out to them and telling them to help the University of San Diego. We have a Turkish professor coming who is going to be lecturing here next week. We want to develop a technology chat GPT program with a university called the ETH Zurich in Switzerland. We will probably run a whole program for you all online on how to use technology in becoming better judges, in doing research, University of Moscow, Pace University, University of Hull, and you name it. And the list keeps growing only if we can all you know, put in a word wherever we travel and see if they can help us out in Pakistan for a lecture. And that's not difficult. And I've seen the interest is amazing. Whoever I've spoken to, they've been very interested in helping out the academy. They said, we have a program, we have a lecture, we'd like to come on, the, on a Zoom talk. I also want to thank that we've also gone ahead and partnered with a lot of international development organizations. You and women, I must thank them for even organizing this program that we are going through right now. The U.S. State Department, International Cortex and Law Enforcement Agency, the International Red Cross, and any name it, it goes on. And we're trying to partner with all these people. They're providing us human resource. They're helping us out in developing our program. There's a lot of strength there. There's a lot of wisdom that they carry. So that is another partnership that goes on on the side. And I must thank the National IT Board, the Ministry of Information Technology, Government of Pakistan for the endless support and uh, you know for making this institution a really, really uh, uh, exciting the way it is now. I must uh, special thanks to an institutional governance expert, Sher Shah Khan, who sits here, uh, who has been at the World Bank, who has given us a great free uh, support, professional support, and I have sat through some of his sessions where he told us how to build an institution. And that's been amazing. Now we'll give a big hand to Shir Shahar. <laughs> so now I just want to announce a few things which would be important. And I think some of the Honorable Chief Justices of the provinces are here. And this is important for them because this program cannot function in the provinces because the judges are going to come from provinces to the Federal Judicial Academy. So their understanding of this program is, uh, will be appreciated. Now first of all, the nominations, as in the past, were done by the Chief Justices of the respective courts. That's not going to work this time. The nominations will come from whoever qualifies in the gene program. So we will be sending names out, FGA will send names out to the high courts that these five people will need for a course to come from Balochistan, to come from Sindh or whatever. And I really appreciate if the Honorable Chief Justices were to honor that request because that's a merit-based program. We want those names who qualify the G program to come and work for us or to, to go through a face-to-face -face program. So that's one paradigm shift. Uh, nominations come from us. Then we're also doing a talent profiling system. So anybody who comes here doesn't come for fun. And there will be a lot of fun also, but they should not think that this is vacation. Chalo Islamabad, Chalo so that's not how it is. We want you to have fun, enjoy, but at the same time learn. So this time we're putting a scorecard. Everybody who goes through a program is a scorecard that's going to be recorded. That's called the talent profiling. Now the talent profiling, I would I want the high courts must also do that.
that for their own judges so they should know how good their judges are and what they're doing. But we'll also share this uh, performance measurement index with them. This scorecard goes a long way. This scorecard helps you uh, in their promotions. This whole scorecard could be really helpful in elevation to the high court. This could also be very helpful in picking up a registrar or an assignment that the Supreme Court or the High Court might have. So I think this scorecard, this talent profiling is important. We don't have that system. I can now put in, press the button and find out who the top people in the district to issue have done well in these courses, who performed well, and I have a cadre that can help uh, move forward. And that's something that I would like you all to come into it. Uh, we will also, also be offering, a lot of donors are reaching out to us for scholarship. For the district judiciary. That too will be nominating and requesting the Chief Justices that this particular person who stands at the top of the talent profile test has been offered a scholarship by these donors. Please, we request you to let him go attend the scholarship. And I would like a liberal response on the part of the judiciary. And I also want to say at this stage that number of our judges have their papers accepted for various conferences, which is a big thing. If it's a big conference and one of our judges has written a paper which has been accepted to be read at that conference. I have noticed that most of the high courts have turned down their requests. I don't understand that. If our session judge, our civil judge, is, his paper has been accepted in a recognized, uh, reputable international conference, we must send him there. I mean, that will be, he will be a flagship for, I mean, it's something that he will be promoting. He will be our ambassador internationally. By not sending them there, I don't understand what objective we are achieving. We are really demoralizing the district judiciary. We should encourage <coughs> people to go out. We must also encourage uh, district judiciary members to go out for LLMs if they have been accepted, either on scholarship or otherwise, to reputable universities. Why should we say no to an LLM if our judge wants to go to an LLM? And that has been in some uh, provinces an approach that I would really request to judge to reconsider. I think we need to bring in that energy we need to bring in that desire that they must go out and learn in the world and come back and get the people. I would also request, we've done that at the High Court in Lahore, that the law clerkship program should also consider civil judges or judges from the district judiciary to come out and work at the High Courts. They mean, I mean, I had a personally amazing experience with them at the Supreme Court, but that is also another forum where you can get to meet your district your, uh, the members of the district judiciary help them, you know, do and get to the other level. So a lot will depend now on what is the response of the judges of the Constitutional Court towards the district judiciary. So my, you know, one thing, one line that I want to say today is that we must communicate, we must reach out to them and give them a pat on the back. They can do wonders, I tell you, they can do wonders. In the end, in the end, I just want to thank the Honorable Chief Justice of Pakistan for his vision and desire to improve the quality of judicial education. I want to thank each and every member of the wonderful faculty that we've had here under the stewardship of the dynamic uh, Director General for making this happen. This requires support and patronage from judges of the Constitutional Court, and I request every judge from the Constitutional Court to support this program, be a part of it. Thank you all for all your support.